welcome back to another video my name is Carla and if you're new please hit the subscribe button and show me some love and if you're not new here then welcome back in today's video I'm going to be telling you my pregnancy labor and delivery story I wish I had my YouTube channel when I was pregnant but I didn't so I'm just going to go over um, you know the long story short of everything that happened during pregnancy labor and delivery and I hope you enjoy it and if you stay tuned till the end, I've actually included the live footage that my cousin recorded for me during my actual labor. Um, so yeah, keep watching and you'll see so that. So a month before I was pregnant, my period was late. Not because I was pregnant, but it was just late and um, my cycles had been a bit funny. So the month I fell pregnant, I was late on my period, but where my cycles were all over the place, I kind of just wanted to find out why. So I went to the doctor so this was um, two days late on my period. I went to the doctors and um, he he went over everything. He said like it could be that I'm low in iron or something like that. Anyway, he did a pregnancy test while I was there just to make sure um, and it was negative. So that was that and I just carried on, um, you know, as I was. Um, I had a blood test booked to see, you know, to look into it a bit further. Anyway, about six days later, I still didn't have my period and I was messaging my um, my cousin at the time. I was just like, oh, this is weird. Like, I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, the doctor thinks it's my iron, la, 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 la. She said, oh, well, how late are you on your period? I said, oh, well, eight days now. And she said, what? Oh my gosh, you need to do a test again. Um, so I was like, oh, okay. So I started getting um, a bit worried. Um, anyway. I was at work at the time, so I said to Tyler, like, oh, when, so when I got home from work, I said to Tyler, like, oh, I'm going to do a pregnancy test, um, just to see if I'm pregnant, and, um, but I have to do it, like, in the morning, because, like, your pee is supposed to be stronger, anyway, so I got the test that night, and then my plan was to do it in the morning, so we woke up at about 5am, that was when Tyler would get up for work, and I'd always just get up with him, so it was about 5am, and um, I was waiting for my first pee, anyway, um, he had just left for work, and that was when I, I did a pee, and I, I peed on the stick, and it came up that it was positive, and I was so shocked, like, I absolutely, I was, could not, believe it i just burst out crying i was so worried like oh my gosh like what am i gonna do i can't believe it It was such a shock because um yeah we weren't necessarily trying to get pregnant like i just didn't think that i was i had no idea um anyway so then i started to get nervous and like obviously i had only just moved here from england and i you know my visa wasn't completely through yet and um, there was just so much like it was just such a shock I just didn't at the time feel like ready for it or anything but um, yeah so I rang Tyler and I look back now I feel like I wish I had done something nicer but anyway I rang Tyler crying my eyes out going oh I just peed on the stick and it's positive and I was bawling my eyes out and he just went to me Carla like it's okay don't worry it's fine like this is fine and I was like oh is it okay okay it's fine anyway I had to go to work that day so I was just so so nervous and um, but I wanted to make sure that I actually was pregnant because I mean it, I could say it was faint it wasn't that faint it was clearly there but anyway I went to go buy another test and yeah it was I was definitely pregnant so I went to work that day and booked a doctor's appointment for after work. After work, I went straight to the doctors and I said to him that I had done two positive tests and he was like, okay, um, like, you know, he felt on my stomach and stuff and he did like kind of a, a checkup. And then he said, do you want me to do a another test? Like just to make sure I said, oh yes, please may as well. So he did the a pregnancy test for me there at the doctor and he looked at me and he said, oh, um, it's negative. And I was like, what's going on like what do you mean anyway I I ended up saying to him I, I do think I am pregnant because I've done two tests that are positive and that I've had researched and it's pretty much impossible to get a fake uh, false positive so um I asked if he if I could get the blood test done anyway a couple of days later 
um, my blood tests came back um, and I was pregnant. Oh, and also when I got home from the doctors, I did a digital test and it was positive. It said uh, pregnant uh, three or two to three weeks or something. Um, so yes, I was definitely pregnant. So that was how I found out. And then it was a whole thing about like, how am I gonna tell my mum because my mum's in England and my family, like what? everyone's just gonna be so upset. It was horrible. Um, but anyway, I, I ended up calling like my mum, my dad, my brothers on FaceTime. That was that. Once everybody knew, it was great. And I was happy, to be honest, like I was secretly really happy that I was pregnant because I've always wanted a baby. And um, yeah, I, I was happy about it. I was just nervous about everybody's reactions, to be honest. But um, I knew that I did want a baby and like Tyler, his reaction was amazing. Like, you know, we, we, we both wanted it secretly, um, even though it was never spoken about like that. My pregnancy was amazing. I loved every second of pregnancy. Um, I did get a bit of morning sickness. I got pregnant at the end of November. So by um, December, January, it was really, really hot. And I got a bit of morning sickness all day, but I didn't vomit once, um, which I kind of wish that I did vomit because I felt that horrible, you know, when sometimes if you throw up, it makes you feel a bit better. Um, so yeah, it, was, it wasn't nice when I had a bit of morning sickness, but it didn't last long. I probably had it from about eight weeks to 12 weeks it started to ease off. And I was working at the time so I would just eat like cheese and crackers. I think that was all I could eat was they're like these little, they come in a pack. It's like got some cream cheese and some crackers and I was just eating those. I just wished for a bump. I, you know, was looking at my stomach every day, taking pictures and um, I had nothing there. And I just really wanted something to show for my pregnancy. Um, anyway, I ended up getting a bump probably at around 28 weeks. I'll put a picture of what my bump looked like at about 28 weeks. So from then on, my bump just started to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and I loved having a belly. It was the best thing ever. Um, at 20 weeks, we did the gender scan, and we threw a little party and did the balloon pop thing. Um, yeah, found out we were having a boy, which was really exciting. As for stretch marks, I didn't get stretch marks. I um, oh, I did get stretch marks on my boobs. But like on my belly and stuff, I didn't. I got one dark one right in my inner thigh, right up the top. You can't really see it. Um, I don't know what that was down to. I mean, I was applying bio oil every single morning and night. But um, I've heard of people doing that and still getting stretch marks. So I think maybe it's just genetics or something. So then the labour and delivery. At about 30 eight weeks and six days. I had a shower before bed and I had dried myself off and I just laid in bed uh, with no, I hadn't put any clothes on or anything yet. I just like no underwear, nothing. So I just kind of like laid in bed and all of a sudden I felt like a bit of a trickle just come down um, onto bed. So it, it wasn't enough that it was like my water's breaking because it, it really wasn't. It was probably the amount of like a teaspoon amount of water. Um, so, you know, I thought well, it could be something, you know, in the shower or something. I didn't really know. But anyway, it, it was something to, to note. So I, I seen it, I took a photo of it, I sent it to my um, my family and was like, oh gosh, like the, the women in my family. And they was like, oh gosh, I don't know, like you should call the hospital. And then I went to sleep that night. But I was a bit like, you know, I did keep waking up and checking, but I didn't get anything after that. So literally just that tiny, tiny little trickle. Anyway, the next day, me and my friend Jess went to this um, baby expedition. It's like a pregnancy and baby expo in Perth. And um, it was quite a long drive. So she came and picked me up because by that point I, I had stopped driving like myself just in case something were to happen. So my friend came and picked me up and we drove to this expedition. And the drive was about like an hour. So we were in the car for a long time. And I just remember like there was also a really long queue to get into the expo, like, you know, in, in the car. Um, so we were in this traffic jam and I remember like, oh my back, my back's really sore. And I hadn't dealt with like any back pain or anything during my pregnancy. So we were in the car and I was like, oh, like that's sore. Anyway, didn't really think anything of it. We, we went to the baby expo. I was walking around all day and um, yeah, that was that. 
I did end up calling the hospital actually. I called the hospital when I got the trickle. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is a shambles. So I did speak to the hospital and the hospital, so the night I got the trickle, I rang the hospital and they said, you know, if you get more, if it was your waters, it it's normally keeps coming, you get more water, because obviously you've got more than a teaspoon of water in there. Um, so anyway, they said, just let us know, like keep an eye on it. If you get more, come into the hospital, but if you don't, then um, just let us know. Um, so I didn't get any more, so I didn't go to the hospital that night. Anyway, then when me and my friend were on the way to the baby expo, I called the hospital and was like, oh, just to let you know, um, I haven't had any more water and my um, my discharge had kind of just gone back to normal. Like, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't like it was watery or anything like that. It was just completely normal again. So uh, they said, okay, no worries. Like, we're happy to let you go on about your day. So, okay, cool. So, yeah, then we went to the baby expo. Anyway, so I was walking around all day. And then the next day... I, we had a rental inspection, so let me just turn the brightness down a little bit here. We had a rental inspection coming up, so I jet washed, I was like jet washing all the outdoors. We've got like decking, I was jet washing the decking, jet washing all of the, um, the, the tile, like the slab things. Um, so yeah, I was jet washing the whole day, literally from the minute I opened my eyes, I put my tracksuit straight on and I was jet washing um, until the sun went down. I was out there all day. Anyway, that night, um, I had a shower, laid in bed, and the same thing happened. I got a trickle, and I was like, oh, gosh. So I, and also Tyler had been, like, busy all day, and we were both so tired. Like, we had been working, like, hard work all day. And um, then I got this trickle, and I was like, oh, for goodness sake. So I called the hospital, and they said, come in. I mean, it's such a small amount, honestly, it's just a tiny, tiny bit of water, but you know, you're that pregnant. So they said, come in and we'll check, you know, it doesn't sound like it's your waters, but you know, you, have, you can't be too safe, especially when you're like 39 weeks. Um, so she, they hooked, we got to a hospital, they hooked me up to the machines and we were laying there for ages. Tyler, <laughs> Tyler didn't even want to go to the hospital. He was like, oh, you're overreacting, like it, it's nothing. Um, and, but yeah, we just went like, just to make sure. And even the midwives there at the hospital, they was like, yeah, I don't think it is, but yeah, just let us, let us just do the, do the test. So anyway, she did a swab, which is how they test if it's amniotic fluid or not. And before she had even left the room to go like wait for the test to come up, it was positive amniotic fluid. So my waters had gone at some point. So it was probably like the two days before or let or like before that. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely amniotic fluid, but my body hadn't gone into labor that whole time. So I had to get induced, which was such a shock. So yeah, she just said to me like, you know, you're ha you have to have this baby tonight, um, or not tonight, but you know, we need to induce you ASAP. You need to get this baby out. You know, there's really high risk for infection now because my uh, waters would have gone like, you know, a couple days ago. Um, so, <laughs> and at the time, I looked at, I was on a like a heart rate monitor thing, and I just looked at Thailand. I was so, I went bright red. I was so nervous, like, just it was such a shock that that we had just been given this news and um my heart rate went up and it's like going because it was so high i was so scared uh, but i hadn't i hadn't thought about like birth the whole time i was pregnant i wasn't worried about birth i wasn't thinking about it i just was like you know when it happens it happens so then for it to just be smacked in the face like that um i was so shocked anyway we went straight to the labor ward I've just realised that um, half of the video I filmed was out of focus, so I have to say it again. I went to the labour ward with Tyler, and they put the drip, the Pitocin, I think it is, um, to give you false, con like false labour. They put that um, drip into my cannula. My cannula was here in my arm, 
um, and because my waters had broken I was at high risk of infection or baby was at high risk of infection they had to pump antibiotics into my cannula every four hours and the antibiotics were so painful like to go in so the feeling of it like actually hitting I don't know if they'd put it in wrong I don't really know why it hurt so bad but every time they would put this antibiotic in it would feel like acid like burning and I'd do this and I'd give them my hand and I'd just be ow, like oh it's sore it's sore um, it, it hurt worse than the contractions like it was a different pain the contractions I could breathe through but that was pure like agony then the contractions started um, they came on quite hard and fast and I'm not sure if it's because um, of the drip but they were back to back to back to back and they were very 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 painful um, so they put it up to the highest dose um, that I could be on like before they did the epidural and they checked me and I had got to four centimeters so um, so I wasn't you know I was in labor for 18 hours in total and that was probably at about like 14 hours at that time and I just wasn't dilating quick enough anyway so they prepped me for a c-section because they said um so they, after they had put me on the highest dose and they checked me and I was four centimeters they said oh well, we'll give you I think it was four hours we'll give you another four hours and if you haven't um, dilated enough by then like you know up to 10 centimeters we'll have to take you straight to theater um, so they gave me an epidural um, and they took off all my like jewelry and stuff and got us ready Tyler had to take off like his jewelry and um, we kind of just waited waited it out but by this point I had been given the epidural and the epidural um, I was at the time that they gave it to me that was when my contractions were obviously at their worst I was only four centimeters but I don't know yeah if it was worse but I was literally like ah in pain I wasn't screaming I was just like this like this and just wanting them to get the um, injection over with I was holding on to the midwife's arms and I was doing this to her like giving her a massage just like trying to keep still for the um, anesthetist or whatever you call him um, to put the epidural into my back anyway that was done and then it took about half an hour for the um, epidural to kick in once the epidural had kicked in it was amazing I felt great I felt good I just was laying there relaxing and you know just taking it all in I had been awake since you know that morning and I had been jet washing the whole um I wasn't even it was the morning before because the labor was like 18 hours so yeah I'd been awake since the morning before I had jet washed the whole yard then I had gone and done a whole labor and I still hadn't slept and um, they said oh try and sleep but I couldn't sleep I was way too excited I was about to meet my baby so anyway I just um, laid there and then it came to the point the deciding time where they checked me and if you're 10 centimeters great you can go ahead and push the baby out uh, but if you're not we need to do a cesarean because they couldn't wait any longer because of the risk of because my waters had gone there was a risk of infection anyway I forgot to tell you that during the labor just before I think it was so during the labour when I was contracting um, and it wasn't progressing they went to pop my waters and when they tried to pop my waters there was no waters there so my full waters probably had gone like a week before then because all I got at home was two tiny little trickles of water so the whole like the load of water would have probably come out in the shower or the toilet or something and I just wouldn't have noticed but um, it's not like I wasn't aware of my body like any little twinge I'd get I would look out you know oh what was that um, so I don't know I still to this day don't know when my waters would have gone but yeah so there was no waters there so I did um, I had a dry birth anyway they checked my if I was dilated and when she um, just went like this the hair the head was there she said oh I can see his black hair and everyone was like oh my gosh so it was such a relief because I wanted to deliver naturally rather than cesarean obviously like um, you know if I had the choice I didn't mind you know if I had to get a cesarean then so be it but um, yeah so I was able to deliver naturally which was so good um, yeah so so they said that they'd give it an hour just for baby to work his way down a little bit more 
and um, so I just laid there for an hour and then the midwife asked me would you like me to put a mirror so you can watch and I said oh my gosh yes please I would love that so I had the bed and then there was this huge mirror um, in front of the bed um, so that I could see it all happening um, I wasn't in pain I could feel everything I could feel the pressure um, I could actually feel him like coming down so I was with it uh, but I couldn't feel the pain of it so I was still in tune with my body which I loved um, our hospital was really great because we decided that um, we asked them if Tyler could deliver the baby so Tyler um, and the midwife you know when it when it got to the point where the baby was almost out like you know Tyler had his gloves on and the midwife was kind of talking him through oh when baby comes out this is how you hold him and da 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 so yeah that was lovely so everybody got involved um, and I forgot to mention the people that was in the room so it was the midwife Tyler Tyler's mum Holly and then Holly was on FaceTime to Holly was on FaceTime to my mum, my auntie, um, my nan and my other cousin. So that was all of the people that were watching it live. This is the culprit. <laughs> Hello. This is him. This is the guy who, um, who came out in the end. But yeah, so they were all of the people that were, um, that were there for it. I wasn't pushing for long, I think it was about like 18 minutes or 13 minutes, it was less than two hours. Um, oh, it was less than 20 minutes. Anyway, <laughs> why are you smiling at? Um, so yeah, I ended up pushing him out and he gave us a big loud cry. So we knew he was alive <laughs> and he weighed seven pound one and he was 52 centimeters long and um, but we had to stay in the hospital for a couple of days just because of um, you know being high risk of infection um, so that we had to stay in for a couple of days which was actually really nice because it just gave um, me and Devonte time to bond and establish breastfeeding um, which was lovely. The after pain was so once the epidural wore off, which was about an hour after the birth, I started to feel like you know pain down there and cramps. And every time he would breastfeed, I'd get like a big gush of blood, um, and it would I would actually feel the contractions again. Like really, it, it was quite sore afterwards um, every time he would breastfeed and then also like my nipples were sore because of getting used to the breastfeeding um, but you know by that point it's it's all done you know and you you've got your baby to show for it so you don't mind um, so yeah that was my birth um, I didn't get stretch marks afterwards either um, I got up to 56 was it 56 yeah, I got up to 56 kilos um, at my biggest um, when I was full term, I was 56 kilos and then um, I dropped, I went back to my original weight of 51 kilos about four weeks later um, and now my, nine months later I've actually lost weight than my pre-pregnancy, I'm 49 kilos now. Um, so yep, we, we snapped back alright, which is good. And, and now I've got my lovely little boy and I love him so much and being a mum is honestly the best thing that's ever happened to me. I love it. I feel like this was my calling in life. And all of the worry that I felt when I saw that cross on the pregnancy test, all the worry and the tears and the uncertainty all went away as soon as he was born um, and I would do it all over again for him in a heartbeat because he's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, love. I get all sloshy. I normally get sloshy when I'm drunk, but now I'm sloshy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go because um, he 
probably wants to go play. So yeah, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and if you made it till the end, well done. Um, let me know in the comments below if there's any other video ideas that you'd like to see and I'll definitely film those for you um, because yeah, I want to make videos on what you want to see. That's why I'm doing it for, for you viewers. And yeah, love you so much. Goodbye. This is where our baby will be. Oh my god. How do you feel? Yeah. Oh, good girl. Oh, it comes, it comes. Yeah.